Greetings, brothers and sisters. Well, again, we bear witness that there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God equal to him. As always, Christ is God alone. We associate none with him. There's only one in the Godhead and he have no partners, no equals, no rivals. God alone should be worshipped. No one else, nor anything else. Only God alone should be worshipped. I greet all of my brothers and sisters, friends, and to my loyal enemies around the world that here and watch this program as always it's a privilege to come back and disturb the peace that the devil tries to give you our objective is to call your attention to what is written and your objective should be to obey what's written let me just say to all the ministers of the truth of God message and even the ministers that have reached out to us who desire to be a part of this. As you know, we will be dedicating, God willing, our lower auditorium, January 2nd and January 3rd. Down there will be a minister's meeting on the 2nd, which is a Saturday, 10 o'clock Saturday morning. All brothers that minister that are able to be here, be here, please have your reports your reports for 2020. All ministers that be here have your reports. Ministers that will not be able to make it, God willing, we hope to zoom you in into the meeting. We designed a beautiful uh, conference hall for the ministers and it is beautiful. And uh, so uh, we should have a very large screen mounted up on the wall for those who can't make it. Uh, don't be lazy now and say, well, I can't make it, I'm going to zoom in. Well, <laughs> you should not want to miss this dedication service. It is the Lord's doing and we, uh, we owe him everything and we thank him for it. Also, brothers and sisters, as I was mentioning before we got started, uh, we we're waiting for our proposals to come in. We have anywhere from three to five proposals from different steel companies and erecting our two balconies in the main auditorium. I do hope if it be the Lord's will, I can have the main auditorium up and running if there's no hindrance. Up and running and dedicated. God be my helper. By 2021, God be my helper. Uh, it's a lot of work that we are doing internationally, but it's all worthwhile. When I think of the thousands that have repented of their sins and were baptized and are being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, well, God proves to me that this labor is not in vain. And uh, you have to be dedicated to it. It's not a good feeling to have so many thousands pulling on one person, but uh, you have to be dedicated. I'm inclined that many people, most people, and understand what this consists of and the sacrifices that are involved, they just see me in the pulpit or see me on television or on the internet. They have no clue of the extensive hard work that go on behind the scenes that pulls me into countless of directions. But uh, as we labor, and I thank God for the ministers that labor along with us, in spirit and in truth, and I thank God for all the brothers and sisters everywhere that labor with us, uh, contending earnestly for the faith that's once delivered unto the saints. Now, I don't mean by laboring, trying to preach. We don't have that. Thank God for that. <laughs> I know if I had, if, if we was allowed by biblical precept to have women preachers, I can point out some sisters. <laughs> Oh, yes. Man, I can point out some sisters that will, hey, man, they'd be brutal in the pulpit. Hey, man, I mean, they couldn't wait to get up here and give you so many pieces of their mind. 
All right, let me update uh, our viewers. Uh, I see that two was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in San Francisco, California. Also, I want to make an announcement to all of you that are watching. In the Los Angeles, California area and surrounding area, October 31st, uh, Brother Minister Santana will be baptizing all of them who desire to be baptized. The address, 31st, 1858. No, it'll be October 31st, beg your pardon. 1858 West 84th Street. 1858 West 84th Street. Los Angeles, California. God willing, they will be getting started by 10 o'clock a.m. And they will go to 1 p.m., but believe me, if you come later and they're there, they'll stick around, take you down in water. You might as well get ready to come by the hundreds. You don't need to sit around and decide what you're going to do. You get ready to do it. Whether you're in L.A. or all surrounding areas or nearby states, come to 1858 West 84th Street in Los Angeles, California, October the 31st, because on a Saturday, baptisms will begin at 10 o'clock, God be our helper. Also, here in HQ, in headquarters, 11 was baptized so far today in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, six was baptized in Detroit, eight was baptized in Rocky Mount, one was baptized in New Brunswick, three was baptized in Memphis, and like I mentioned earlier, six was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in Johannesburg, South Africa, which is all a blessing, and we thank God much for it. Viewers, I say to you, if you're on the Lord's side, you get ready to come now. If you want to be saved and want to be right. This are the, these are the last days when I think of it. Only two months left in 2020. Two months left. Have you decided yet to obey God, viewers? There are many of you have not obeyed this message yet, but yet you have this message on your website. Plan it. Some of you call me your boy, Pastor Jen, your boy. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Many sinners got me on their website. That's my boy, Pastor Jennings. Some say that's my main man, Pastor Jennings. All right. If I'm your boy, <laughs> I'm your main man. That's all well and good. But uh, I preach Jesus and him crucified. And you need to understand the importance of giving your life to God now. Used to be a song I used to hear as a kid, get right with God and do it now. And down at the cross, he will show you how. <laughs> and I'm telling you viewers, this is a message for the last days. It's hard, yes. It's rough. They complain about me, but I don't hear nobody complaining how rough and hard the devil is. The devil is very consistent and determined to destroy all those who want to be right. So my question to you that are watching tonight, do you want to be right? And if you say yes, you can't be right. It's impossible. To be right at all in any other way that differ from God's way. Now, if you can be right another way, write me. Tell me about it. Just tell me about it. Give me the name of it. And tell me how to go about doing it. But before your letter is over, you better bring your chapter and your verse from the Bible. Backed up and certified by God himself. You know, there's a lot of businesses now won't take a regular check because they bounce so much. But if you got certified check, brother, that's like money in the bank. This is a certified message. Backed up, wrapped up, all just put together with scripture. And I strongly advise you, viewers, I strongly advise you, 
Get prepared to obey. Now I know I got a lot of critics, but that doesn't matter. You're too small to me. Your criticism don't mean nothing. You got people now, uh, not that many, just a few smart alecks. They well, why don't Pastor Jennings take down that screen between him and Williams? One man says because he don't believe God. He's scared of COVID. <laughs> I'm scared of God. I'm not scared of COVID. Don't worry, that's going to come down. I'm going to take it down. Maybe that'll make you feel better. But me taking it down, that going to make you obey what, what we're preaching? If I take that down now, you're going to obey what I'm preaching? Hellion? <laughs> no, you're not going to obey it. A lot of folk get on there just to have something to say on the message. That's all. That's all. And they make comments and then put a little website on, under their comment so people can log on to what folly they have. That's right. Viewers, I have God to offer you. Yes. I have God and God's word to offer the world, which is better than what anybody can offer. That's right. I offer you God and God's word. That's right. What I am offering you, angels have to bow to it. Angels have to bow to it. What I am offering you, Angels are forbidden to contradict it. That's right. That's what I am offering you is God and God's word. That's it. And what I find is God is right in everything. That's right. That's right. One scripture says, hear now the word of the Lord. And that's what we have to offer you, the word of the Lord. All right, open your Bible up in the book of Isaiah, if you please. Chapter 1. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 1. All right, let's give him some more juice quickly, please. Isaiah chapter 1, begin at verse 10. Isaiah 1 and at verse 10. All right. Hear the word of the Lord. You hear that? Hear the word of the Lord. Just start off. Smacking you in the face. Hmm. Letting you know you can't blame me or no other God sent preacher. That's right. God say, hear him. Hear the word of the hear Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye rulers of Sodom. Ye rulers of who? Of Sodom. Of Sodom. Give ear. Give ear. Unto the <coughs> law of our God. Unto God's law. Ye people of Gomorrah. And to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Do you hear this? You know, God got to a point where he got tired of all of these burnt offerings. Offerings up of lambs, bullocks, heifers, turtle doves, meat offerings, water offerings. God got to a point, viewers, he got tired of that. To what purpose? He asked, what is your reason? Is the multitude of your sacrifices You know, you got religions now that's still offering up goats and sheep and all that stuff. God asks. It's a what purpose? What is your reason? Is the multitude of your sacrifices and unto all me? All these sacrifices you're offering to him. Saith the Lord. Say of God. I am full of the God of, of it. rams. Glory to God, I want you to get this. Amen. God says he's full of it, viewer. That's right. Tired of it. I am full. I am full. Of the burnt offerings of rain. You know, when someone sit at the table and eat and say they fool and really fool, rest assured you they're not reaching for that bread no more. That's right. No more chicken, no more bread, no more turnip greens. Amen. No more fish, no more macaroni and cheese. <laughs> then you have some their stomach is like a bottomless pit. That's right. They love to go to those eat-all-you-can-get restaurants, <laughs> buffet style. That's all right, but you still better govern yourself because to what? <laughs> what of God say? He that strive for the master is temperate in all things. That's right. Sometimes you can't always fill up like you used to. You have to be temperate. Yeah. And the reason why the Bible requires such because a day may come in your life you can't get all what you're used to getting. Being you done disciplined yourself, you done governed yourself, you were temperate, you have self-control. If that day ever come in your life, you won't sin. They get what you want because 
of your self-control and your discipline. All right. I am full of the burnt God offerings. God said, of I'm full of your burnt offerings. And the fat of fed and beasts. And the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of eagles. Huh? When you come to appear before me. Listen to that, God. When you come before him. Who has required this at your hand? Who's telling you that this is still necessary? To tread my court. Tread my court. Bring no more vain oblations. What? Bring no more vain oblations. All right, you religions that are watching and listening. In the Middle East, and in the Asiatic world, and even here in America, hmm. offering up sacrifices, and you think God still want dead calves and dead lambs? You know, even satanic worshipers do that stuff. That's right. Taking dogs and kill it, and taking rats and kill it. There have been many religions that has went as far as sacrificing children. That's right. Cutting their fathers and cutting their mothers. That's right. You know, we're living in a time now that people are so gullible. Even though thousands of years went by when they was doing this in the Old Testament, you know a false prophet can pop up right now and convince men and women that you should kill your babies, your sons and daughters, in order to be right with God. And I guarantee some gullible, blind, hell fool will believe it. In the book of 2 Chronicles and chapter 33. And murder their own child. Now, let's get Bible for this. Hear this now. 2 Chronicles chapter 33 will start at verse 1. All right. Manasseh was 12 years old. What's that? Manasseh. Manasseh. Was 12 years, 12 old, years old when he began to reign. <coughs> yes. And he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. Yes. But he did that which was evil in the sight oh, of the Lord. Oh, Manasseh was an evil something. Uh -huh. right. Like unto the abominations of the heathen. Yeah. And the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Now we're at verse 5. And he built altars for all the, of the host of heaven. Wait a minute. Hmm. Manasseh built altars. For all the, all hosts the heavenly heaven, hosts in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Yes. And he caused his children. He caused his children. To pass through the fire. I told you. Amen. King Manasseh was wicked. That's right. Remember, where was it in? Waco, Texas is it called? Yes. When that false prophet, I forgot his name. David Koresh. David Koresh. Yes. Sent by the devil. And all of them that was there lost. Yeah. Other false prophets, even here in America, convinced their followers drank poison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe one place they found the followers of some group all dead in bed. Yeah. Jim Jones, I remember that in the 1970s when I was in junior high school. Down there in Guyana, I believe it was. Convince all of them sad souls down to mothers and children. Drink poison. Right. So, viewers, this is the danger of false prophets. Right. The danger, the danger. And he caused his children. Manasseh called his children to pass through the fire. Pass through the fire. In the valley of the son of Hinnom. Yes. Also, he used also he observed time. He observed time. And used enchantments. What you mean you observe times? Today you call it horoscopes. That's right. Amen. You got folk, I'm a Pisces, I'm a Aries. No, you're not. You're a sinner and of the devil. <laughs> That's, right. That's what you are. That's right. Amen. That's right. I'm no Aquarius, some gay looking strange thing holding a picture of, <laughs> holding a vase. A vase. Amen. I'm no Aquarius. I'm Pastor Jennings, the servant of Jesus Christ. That's who I am. <laughs> That's right. All that foolishness. I don't believe in that mess. That's right. Amen. You got men and women today. Tomorrow I'm going to get married. Let's, let's be boyfriend. And... What's your sign? They ask each other that hideous talk. <laughs> What's your <laughs> That's right. hideous talk? What's your sign? Just tell them what it is. Right. Devil. What's yours? Lucifer. That's right. You bunch of heathens, heathens. you bunch of heathens. That's what you are. That's right. Listen at this. Also, he observed time. He observed time. And used enchantments. He used witchcraft. And well, God's mm -hmm. people don't dabble in playing uh, with Ouija boards. That's right. That's not for God people. That's right. We don't, uh, we don't wear clothes that uh, have an emblem of a skull and crossbones. We don't wear that. No. Not for God's people. That's right. We don't play with Ouija boards and all of that foolishness. Uh, we don't celebrate Halloween. We don't Amen. trick or treat. Amen. 
Amen. We don't want that. We don't have no candy. If someone knock on your door and you give candy to uh, to the wicked. <laughs> Amen. That's right. As anytime anyone out there trick or treating, they're wicked. They're wicked. If your mother got you out there, your mom is wicked and your wicked daddy. That's right. Amen. So when you got people, you don't do that. No. You don't do that at all. Many times the neighbors knock on my door. And I opened the door. I, I don't keep up with these holidays. And I didn't know what they was knocking for that time of night. <laughs> opened the door and a bunch of young children with their parents grinning. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, man, here I'm eating dinner. And you disturbing my good food. <laughs> knocking on my door, holding out trash bags. <laughs> That's right. Man. That's right. <laughs> grinning, I said. That's right. How about trick or treat? I opened the door. Trick or treat. I, I forgot what that stuff was. Mm -hmm. I told him, I don't celebrate this. I ain't got nothing to give you. Nothing. That's One right. little child said to me some time ago, Mister, you don't have nothing. I looked at him and said, Nothing. <laughs> eh, be gone. Be gone, I said. That's right. Never. Ever come back. That's right. Now, I guarantee if I gave out little Bibles, they'll look at me like I lost my mind. <laughs> Even the parents would say, We can't eat this. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Taste the Lord. That's right. The word that God is see that is good. That's right. And then once we take the contents of that meat and break it down. The lowest common denominator, Lord, that God, the smallest child, can find it digestible. That's right. All right. Also, he observed times. You used to celebrate Halloween, didn't you, Will? Yes, sir. Amen. Oh, that's right. He did. <laughs> Amen. Do you, listen. Hey, hey, viewers, let me tell you something. <laughs> Somebody probably just said, you know he feel good. Now you're picking on Will. It just came to my mind. It just came to my mind. I remember. I remember. <laughs> The man Wells grew up together. He lived down the street from me. Amen. And uh, every year, every year, he, you know, usually you change costume every year. <laughs> Not Williams, brother. Williams, every year he would get dressed up as Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, he had the mask and every, that little silly smile on the mask and all of that mess. <laughs> Amen. 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 When I was blind, I was a child. Uh, I prefer just going in the trunk and, you know, putting on old big baggy clothes and look like a bum. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, so we would get together, me, Williams, and other uh, kids in the neighborhood, go from house to house. Trick or treating, he had on that old rusty old <laughs> Casper the Hellbound Ghost costume. Amen. Amen. You know, it's something to look back. You better give me Titus three and three. Yes. It's something to look back at your past and see how dumb you were. That's right. I was a fool. Oh yeah. That's I got right. dressed up like a bum for Halloween. I had a lot of help from my brothers and sisters too. Mm -hmm. Amen. They would put old big pants on me and stuff a bunch of stuff down there, put a big shirt on me and stuff it up on me like I got a big stomach. And then my brother will get black pencil, <laughs> black pencil and draw long sideburns on my face. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no mustache, none of that stuff. Then he'll draw a mustache and he'll draw a goatee beard. Amen. And here I am. Imagine God serving. God serving. Out here running from door to door to my son, trick or treat, looking like a bum. You imagine that? God serving. <laughs> imagine that, Moses and Aaron, uh, uh, looking like a bum and Casper. <laughs> Boy, God is so merciful. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is so merciful. Oh, yes. All right, this is the scripture that everybody can identify with. Come on, Casper. I mean, Williams, come on. <laughs> Come on, William. Titus chapter 3 and verse 3. All right. But well, we ourselves also were sometimes <laughs> fools. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's good when you're able to look back and say that we ourselves were. Were. Were sometimes fools. Oh, yeah. Not, not still is now. Don't have to save money. These, right. when, you don't, when you wake up and don't celebrate all this holiday folly, 
It saves you money. Amen. Buying all these little candy bars every year every and year. corn candy. Boy, when I was little, I loved that corn candy. That's right. I couldn't wait for Halloween to come around. Mm. Corn candy. <laughs> I mean, I loved that nasty stuff. I loved it. Amen. <laughs> Corn candy. When Easter came around, hey amen, and we was in school, I couldn't wait to get those little yellow marshmallow chickadees. Yeah. I loved them things. And then, you, you please, give me the large Hershey chocolate rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know no better. I was a heathen. <laughs> That's right. Hey amen, yes. I was a heathen. I was a heathen. And Williams was a hellion. <laughs> Amen. The two H's, the heathen and the hellion. Amen. Wouldn't you say amen to that, William? Amen. Amen. That's amen. Right. All right, come on. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Were. 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 Amen. Amen. We didn't have Christmas trees in my house. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I was a child, my mother celebrated Christmas. Yeah. She's watching now, old Josephine. She's watching. And, uh, but my father, he didn't stand for it. He used to get on my mother. He would tell her, didn't I tell you the Bible ain't never said Jesus was born on December 25th? He would tell her, you don't stop. You're going to go to hell for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can depend on mother being a heathen for us. Okay. Amen. She was a wonderful heathen for us. <laughs> Amen. And she looked out for the little heathens we were. And I, I remember some of the gifts I had. You know, uh, in the late 60s and 70s, they had that, I don't know what you call it, but it came on a reel, like slides. <clears throat> and you put it in that thing that got two, you know, like, like binoculars, and you hit it, and you can see everything that looked like 3D. I remember when she bought that man, I was so happy. I was looking at Jungle Book, <laughs> just looking at it. And then when she bought me my movie projector from Lip Brothers, my man, you would have thought Gabriel came and visited me. <laughs> I put my slides in and showed my movies on the wall. I didn't know I was a heathen then, yeah. but I was a heathen. That's right. I was a heathen, but uh, I had a strong father that eventually kept pounding, pounding in the house until my mother gave in and gave over and tapped out. Amen. Amen. Until now, I forget many of these holidays exist until I see these decorations yeah. on people's houses. Hey, viewers, yeah. viewers, you got scarecrows on your house, on your door now? Hmm. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. And uh, all type of uh, skulls and things like that. Yeah. You're letting the world know you are evil heathen. That's right. Halloween is of the devil. That's right. Amen. Don't take your children out there the way things are now. Hmm. Even when I was a child, you had sick, crazy people. You know, in the 60s and 70s, heroin was the drug of choice. Mm -hmm. Well, it got so bad, and not only Philadelphia, but throughout America, that sick folk was taking harrowing and injecting it in apples because you know in Halloween they don't just give out candy at, when you go to people's door they give out apples also right. and they was injecting heroin in apples so uh, children can get high Lord. and I remember after I became adult there was you know the devil always wanted to lead you as a child to start something so you can continue it as an adult. You know, adults get tattoos, which is also of the devil, because the Bible tells you you don't put no carving in your flesh. That's right. But as a child, or rather, I remember when they had tattoos for children, but you go to the store and you bought little things that not only that stamp you, but you lick it and then put it on you. It, was, it, it can wash off, but you lick it and put it on you and hold it. And then the child got a little tattoo. Well, I remember when uh, it came across the news where the news was warning parents not to allow your child to do it because men and foolish women got a hold of that mm. and laced it with some type of narcotic. That way when the child licked it in the moment it touched their tongue and touched their arm, their skin absorbed it. And they instantly became addicted. And in some cases, children died for, from it. 
viewers, we are living in a wicked, evil, hell-bound time. That's right. You don't have time to waste your energy to get upset with me. No. I advise you to use your energy to get out your clothes and put on some other clothes and go down in water. Right. After you repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost. I'm warning you. Oh, yeah. I'm warning you. These wicked, uh, satanic days that's observing the devil, Halloween, Christmas, and Easter, right. and all of this folly. That's right. Folly, I said. That's right. Listen at this now. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, and disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Disobedient. Disobedient. Amen. Amen. Snuck out the house, going to party. Yeah. Barely made it back alive. Friend got killed. I thought of a case in Yaton, Pennsylvania some years ago. It sticks out in my mind. It was on the news how they were looking for a young girl. If I'm not mistaken, I think she was either 14 or 15. And uh, her mother told her not to go out. But she went out. And uh, when they did find her, if I'm not mistaken, she was dismembered. My Lord. Dismembered. They found her all dismembered. Remember, you know, you know, sometimes children, you think your parents is too hard, but good parents, they want the best for you. That's right. And they want the best out of you. That's right. And when they tell you what's right, they're just trying to keep you from making the same, many of the same dumb, irresponsible mistakes that they made. That's right. I don't care if your, your, if your mother and father now was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. If your mother and father ever tell you they never done nothing wrong, you got uh, parents that's of the devil. Amen. And all parents done wrong. Someone. Everybody. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. All parents done wrong. I don't care who they are who they were. Amen. Thank God. But when parents wake up and they take the time, take the time and sit you down and educate you yeah. about life. Yeah. See, this young generation now have more at their exposure than what we had. That's right. Now, every, every type of madness is right at their hands. That's right. And man, they can pull it up on the phone. They can pull it up on a computer. The smart TV is just a large computer screen, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and, every, and they can download everything. Everything. Everything, everything out of hell yeah. that's out here now. They drag and destroy not just the young people. But it's killing the old folk too. That's right. Old folk done turned their back on God now. Turned their back on God. Left church. Backslid. Amen. I've met old men in the barbershop who used to be under Bishop Bessie Johnson. Hey, they used to be under him, were baptized and had the Holy Ghost when they were younger. Now, if you look at them, you wouldn't think they ever had the knowledge that Christ ever was in the earth. My Lord. Because the devil had got a hold of the world and turned their mind against God. That's right. Listen at this. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. You want to be able to say this all your life. We ourselves also were, 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 were sometimes foolish. Keep that behind you. That's right. Huh? Were. That's how you can press towards the mark of the high calling. Glory to God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's right. We ourselves were. Were sometimes <laughs> foolish. And I'm pretty sure you that are watching, you that are here can say amen. If you look at your life, oh, and you ain't got to look far, you don't have to look long. <laughs> no. Eh? No. You don't have to look far, and you don't have to look long. That's right. And you got to admit, you were sometimes foolish. A fool. Amen. Uh -huh. Disobedient. What? Disobedient. You are hard here. Here's someone that tried to instruct you and tell you what's right. Yeah. Amen. But you commit treason right behind the back of the one that was instructing you. That's right. You went behind their back and act like a fool. And now the same one that you betrayed, you had to go back and reach out to them to bail you out of your madness. Amen. Eh? Amen. What is it? We ourselves also were sometimes foolish. foolish. Disobedient. Disobedient. Deceived. What? Deceived. You know, it's sad to be deceived repeatedly. Yes. And not only that, not only is it sad to be deceived repeatedly, it's sad to be deceived repeatedly the same way. Amen. Imagine that. Amen. You keep getting duped the same way. You ain't learned nothing. No. You ain't learned nothing. You haven't learned nothing. Deceive. Yeah. Deceive. Somebody played the same game. You know, when I came up, 
<laughs> uh, you go downtown Philadelphia on Market Street, you will always see some fellas down there with a table playing a game called Three Card Molly. Yeah. And, uh, and, and in the midst of that crowd, the whole thing was win money or lose money. So in the midst of that crowd, he would have other guys working with him, but they wouldn't stand at the table. They'd be there in the crowd. Why? And so to make people think that the game was legit. So he has moved those cards around and moved those cards around. You may put $20 on a card, and he put $20 on the card. If you guess the card, you get the $20 back. All right, so then he'll move it around, and his buddy would be in the crowd, put the $20 down there, and, he, and basically he'll let him win. He'll let him win, and then he'll let him win a little bit because they're all working together. And they, that way he get others involved. And when others get involved, they, 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 they're, they're the real suckers. <laughs> they're the real fools. That's right. Feel what, don't you know these preachers are playing just like three-card molly with you? Amen. They are playing with you. They don't care nothing about your soul. No. They don't care if you would. Listen, if you went to hell tonight, the preacher won't care. If it was possible that you had an envelope in your hand full of money, and was sinking down in the floor of your church going to hell. The preacher will walk by, not grab your arm to try to pull you out of hell. That's right. <laughs> he won't say anything to try to pull you out of hell. That's right. On your way down, that preacher going to run by and snatch that envelope full of money Amen. while you just go on down the hell. That's right. Ah, Deceive. You're following a deceiver. Mm -hmm. A deceiver is one that's willingly knowing what the Bible says and refuse to tell you. That's right. Willingly trick you. I have no respect for no man and no woman who will stoop so low because for a person to deliberately deceive you, they don't love themselves. No. They don't love themselves. No. For them to treat you like what they are, nothing. And there are some folks that live a life of just deceiving folk, just to see what they can get out of it. Right. There's men that do that to women. There's women that do that to men. Yeah. Amen. Uh, just, just, just deceive them and trick them, just to get the money out of them, get the money out of them, get the money out of them. I keep telling people moreover, you cannot walk this life and hit the cemetery without you reaping what you sow. Yeah. Right. The Holy Ghost says. Deceive. The sea. Serving divers Serving lust. divers. Lust. A whole lot of lust. And pleasures. Viewers, is that you? Is that you? Are you, are you, you went clubbing Sorry. last night? Mm -hmm. Many of you watching now, you went clubbing. You went clubbing on Friday. You went clubbing on uh, Saturday. Yeah. You may stay at home on Sunday morning to watch the telecast so you can feel a little spiritual. <laughs> hey, man, you want to feel a little spiritual? Hey, man. Hey, man. But uh, I guarantee you Sunday night, they got parties going on Sunday. Oh, yeah. Certainly, we was used to party. One party. Pastor. You went to one party? Yeah. Just one hey, man, party. what was that? Was it bobbing for apples or pendant? What was it? No, it was Pen a real party. The donkey it was something? a real party. Was it a real party? Were you drinking a little? No. I no beer? Mainly on the wall, Pastor. You was the man on the wall. Well, you know, the they wall. drink whiskey leaning up against the wall, you know. <laughs> you didn't get drunk, didn't get stoned? What about you, Hewie? I thought I heard, yeah, yeah, Hewie. <laughs> you used to party? Get drunk? Yeah, get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it must be good to him. Look at the way he said Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, get drunk? That's all right, man. That's your past. past. That is your past, isn't it? Hey, glory to God. <laughs> well, when you look at your past, yeah. it's a blessing. Oh, yes. Because the Apostle Paul said, forgetting mm -hmm. those things that are behind me, I press towards the mark. That's right. Or it takes God of the high calling. That's right. Now, this is what the devil do. The devil use your past. Yeah. They try to keep you back in the present. That's right. They hinder you from your future with God. Forgetting those things which are behind. Hear us, hear this. In the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. That's one thing, one, uh, you know, when people, thousands of people talk to us and they relate to me about their past. And one thing, I never hold nobody past on them. Right. No, no, I don't, I don't do it. I don't hold nobody past against them whatsoever. Many people ask me, well, Pastor Jennings, if somebody wronged me and I don't trust them, <clears throat> even though they wronged me three years ago, 
and I don't trust them today. Am I holding their past against them? Not necessarily, because if a person wrong you, it is, nature, it is your nature not to trust them. Right. But also, you got to give them a chance. <laughs> and you got to give them a chance, because God has given us a chance every day. That's right. You can't assume that they are the same man and same woman that you dealt with three years ago. Now, I must admit, there are some, they are the same. Yeah. They ain't made no change. No, I mean, they haven't made no change. Anyone that come along, if they can duke them, con them, get something over on them. You know, there are some folk, they distance themselves from you or won't be a friend to you no more because they see that you won't let them duke them no more. That's right. They, you see that you won't let them uh, con them no more. You refuse to give him any more money. You refuse to give her any more money. You ain't buying them nothing else. So what is it? Before they turn you loose, they already got their next candidate lined up. That's right. But I'm telling you right now, you got to reap what you, sow. what you sow. I was raised this way. Be careful how you treat people going up the ladder. Yeah. Because they may be some of the same people you meet on your way down the ladder. That's right. And sometimes the same ones that you despise, that you treated so wrong, God will fix it so. You got to reach out to him. That's right. And you got to reach out to her for help. Oh, yeah. Huh? I bear witness, the false prophet I came up under, he treated a dog better than he treated me. Yeah. Amen. He got over to Paul Pitt and said that if me and my wife, she wasn't my wife yet, but if me and my wife got married, he told the whole church in front of everybody, I hope that you and Sister Darlene drop dead at the altar my Lord. if y'all get married. And for what? There was no reason, not whatsoever. That's right. Amen. He set me down for a year for preaching what's in the Bible. Right. He said, I don't care if what you preach is in the Bible. He said, don't preach it here. Amen. All right. After the year expired, he came back and found the church. He said, all right, I'm going to let Brother Gino preach tonight. And uh, being that he want to talk about Bible so much. And let's see, is he going to stay with what I preach? Yeah. Or is he going to preach what the Bible says? He was so determined to uh, control what I'm preaching. He called the chapter. He called the verse. I ain't had no problems with that. I took the chapter and I took the verse and then God gave the increase. That's right. <laughs> and after God gave the increase, brother, <laughs> amen. After God gave the increase, he jumped up right in the middle of the message and interrupted me again and said, sit down. Yeah. He set me down another year. And he told all the members that was listening to us preach the word of God, he said, if I hear you even say amen to Brother Gino, he said, I'm going to throw you out the church. He said, even if what he's preaching is in the Bible, <clears throat> he said, if I don't preach it here, nobody else going to preach it here. You see, that's the devil out of hell. Right. You bear in mind, you know, if God give you a gift, the word of God say your gift will make room for you. And I can bear witness just as sure as God Almighty is my God right now tonight. My gift, hallelujah, go and say God. My God-giving gift have made room for me. That's right. Amen. And how much room? The world. That's right. God has taken this message and is bumping all around the world, opening up the eyes of men and women of every race under the sun. All right. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Say what? In, uh, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. What is it? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have apprehended. To have apprehended. But this one thing this I do. One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. That are behind. And reaching forth. Doing what? And reaching forth. Reaching forth. Unto those things which are before. I press. I press toward the mark for the prize Hallelujah. of the high Perfect calling God. of God. I press. I press toward the mark. I press. I press. You better be careful who you relate your personal business to. Yes. Amen. Because there's some folks who try to hold that over your head as long as you live. That's true. Amen. That's why you got to be wise. I know the Bible says confess your fault one to the other. Yeah. Amen. But you got to be careful who is that one and who is that other. That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. Because uh, if you go on and confess your faults to a person, then let it, let it go to the grave. Yeah. Make sure you don't confess it to someone that can try to blackmail you. That's right. Amen. Or try to uh, uh, distort something and say that which is not 
true. I'm talking about church people church. too. That's right. I don't care nothing about they speaking in tongues. If they speak in tongues so much until their tongue come down like a shade and the Holy Ghost let it go and it roll in them out and flip around. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care nothing about that mouth activity. That's Amen. Right. Everybody, you just cannot trust with your personal business. That's right. All right. I press toward the mark. I press. I press toward so the mark. God towards the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God. For the God. prize of, of the high calling of God. In Christ Jesus. And that's what everybody that's of God should be pressing for. All right, go back to where you were, son. For we ourselves, back in Titus 3 and verse 13. We ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Disobedient. Hard head. Deceived. Deceived. Serving divers lusts lust and, lust pleasures, and pleasures. Living in living malice, in malice and envy. Envy. Hateful. What? Hateful. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Amen. I'm pretty sure some here now when they was a sinner was just as mean as that devil. Mean. They never thought they'd be sitting in a place like this, church. <laughs> Amen. Haven't you met some people in your neighborhood, evil every day? Amen. If you speak to them, good morning, what's so, so and so good about it? Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. Don't ask me how I'm doing. <laughs> There's some folks so mean, yeah. so evil. Evil. Until they don't know how to accept when someone nice to them. That's right. If someone is nice to them, they think they got a motive. That's right. Because they've been evil and so mean so long. Yeah. Until it should not be a task. Listen to what I'm about to say. When you find it a task of being nice or hospitable, polite, humble. When you find it a task, imagine. Someone said, being nice is out of character for me. My Lord. Wherein being evil and of the devil is the character. But there are people that are just like that. That's right. Being nice and being pleasant is out of character for them. That's right. If a whole day go by, it may hurt them. Yeah. They got to be caught sarcastic. They got to be smart. And they got to mind somebody else's business and something got to come out their mouth that they know should stay in there. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19. Listen at this. We'll start at verse 7. All right. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto Rehearse thee. Rehearse not that to another that which is told to you. And thou shalt fare never the worse. What else? Whether it be to friend or foe. Whether it be to friend or foe. Talk not of other men's lives. What? Whether it be to friend or foe. What did the Holy Ghost say? Talk not of Talk other not men's lives. of other men's lives. And if thou canst without and offense. And if you can without offense. Reveal them not. Don't reveal them. For he heard and observed thee. He heard and observed thee. And when time cometh he and will hate thee. And when time come he will hate thee. If thou hast heard a word. If you heard a word. Let it die with thee. Amen. Is that Bible? Yes. Amen. It's hard to find a half a person that believe that. That's right. Never mind a whole person, a half a one. If thou hast heard a word, have you heard a word? Let it die with thee. No, tweet it. Let it die with thee. Text it. Let it die with thee. Email it. Let it die with thee. Phone. Let it die with thee. Backbite about it. Let it die with thee. Amen. This is God talking. If thou hast heard a word. If you heard a word. Let it die with thee. No. Try to spread it so folk can feel about that person the way you do. Let it die with thee. Amen. You know God certainly know how to keep things in order, doesn't he? That's right. Amen. All right. You better you finish that up, son. You better get more of that. Then mm -hmm. we go back to Titus. because I know some more good yeah, things some more there. In there. Yeah. Back in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 19. And verse 10, if thou hast heard a word, let it die with yes. thee. And be bold. Be what? Be bold. Be bold. It will not burst thee. <laughs> Amen. Well, in other words, you know, there's some people that just can't hold it. <laughs> That's right. That's God right. God lets you know what won't happen. And be bold. It will not burst it thee. It ain't going to burst you. <laughs> That's right. They used to sing that song when I was a child. Said the quartet group. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I can't keep it to myself. Oh, I can't keep it. And that's exactly the way folks are. Amen. They believe it. Go tell it on the mountain. That's right. Over the hillside and everywhere. That's the way folks are. Amen. Amen. Do you hear God talking? If thou hast heard a word. Well, I tell you, when God lay scripture he put everybody in order amen everybody amen 
All right. If thou hast heard a word, you heard a word. Let it die with thee. Die with it. And be bold. Be bold. It will not burst. You won't thee. burst. A fool traveleth with a word. A fool traveleth with a word. What do you mean? That information is in him or her so bad. As a woman. It's, <laughs> that information <clears throat> is built up in them so bad. So bad. It's just moving around. That, that's it's right. It's giving them pain not to say something. That's right. They they like a woman that's in travail. That, it hurts them to keep it to themselves. That's right. That's right. It's bad enough when women gossip. Mm -hmm. When I meet a brother who's worse than a woman with his mouth, get so far away from me, it's like you don't exist. Amen. Amen. I, I, that's just miserable. Yeah. A gossiping woman is bad enough. A gossiping man is worse. That's right. Eh? All right. A fool travails with a word. A fool travails with, with his word. As a woman in labor of as a child. As a woman in labor as a Look how God style you. That's right. You're like a woman. You got so much information in you, it done blew you up. <laughs> That's, huh? That's right. God said, what's wrong with you? Man, I got news. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I got news. Now, what's wrong? I got new. I, I feel like I'm about to burst. I just can't keep it. That's right. I just can't keep it. That's right. <laughs> Am I right? Amen. I got news. <laughs> you old nosy heathen. Nope. You're a heathen. That's what you are. That's you talk you are. too much. That's right. Stay out of other folks' business. Amen. Amen. That's why I've been telling church folk, you have to shut down your Facebook and get your trash off of it. Amen. Facebook will send a lot of y'all faces to hell. That's right. Face first, right to hell. That's right. Eh? Amen. Glory to God, what did he say? A fool travaileth with a word. A fool travail with a word. As a woman in As labor a woman, of a child. That's labor with a child. As an arrow that sticketh a, in a man's thigh. It hurts. It just hurt them to keep that news. Amen. Uh -huh. So is a word within a fool's so belly. So is the word within a fool's gut. Admonish a friend. What? Admonish, Admonish. A, friend. A, a friend. A friend. It may be that he has not done it. Amen. That's right. That's what I've been preaching. That's right. Admonish. Admonish a friend. Why? It may be. It that, may be he's that, innocent. That he has not done he it. He hasn't done what you heard. That's right. That's right. Isn't that good instructions? Amen. Admonish a friend. friend. What do you mean? When you see somebody going around trying to spread something about somebody else and they're a friend of yours, admonish them. No, 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 don't do that. That's right. Don't do that. The one you talk about, they may not didn't do it. That's right. Well, it came from good sources. The good sources is the good book. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Did you hear what the good book said? Let's, let's go to the good source, Williams. In the book of Ecclesiastes 19 and verse 13. Here's your source right here. A, admonish a friend. Admonish. A friend. Glory to God. Amen. Admonish a friend. It may be he has not done it. Amen. Notice when it says it may, be, it may be, that let you know, don't be quick to judge or reach a conclusion. That's right. I don't care if someone go tell you about something on somebody and they shake it and go off in some tongue. I saw Brother Mark Moretti, Moretti, <laughs> Moretti. I thought he, he was high, he was high. I like the prophesying. Mark high, Mark high. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. That's the devil out of hell. That's right. You know, this is, this is a good lesson here. Oh, yeah. You better give chapter and verse again. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19 and verse 13. That's what? Admonish a friend. Admonish your friend. It may be he has not it, done it. Take under consideration. That's right. What you heard ain't true. And if he Hold it. Mm -hmm. But you know why people run with news so fast? Mm -hmm. It's because... They wish it was true. That's right. They don't investigate. That's they don't right. go to the source. You want to know something about Williams? Don't come to Pastor Jennings. That's right. You want to know something about Williams? Go to Williams. That's right. That's you right. want to know something about Huey? Don't go to Moretti. Yeah. Go to Huey. Oh, yeah. You want to know something about Lamar? Don't go to L. I mean, don't go to Moretti. Go to L. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. It might be. It may be he has not done it. That's right. It might be he, he never proposed to that woman. 
Yeah. It might be she never said she was going to marry him. It might be she ain't never slept with him. It might be they ain't never been seen coming out of a hotel room. It might be they never were saw drinking beer or smoking pot. It might be she never was out there with pants on. It might be he never was seen out there wearing shorts. It might be he never was out there shooting dice gambling. That's right. It might be that baby was never his. That's right. It might be she never was pregnant by him. Amen. It might be she's not pregnant at all. That's right. It's good to have a hernia. <laughs> good to have a tumor. Yeah. Admonish a friend. Admonish. A friend. A friend. It may be. It may be. He has not done it. Give them a benefit of a doubt just like you also want to give your hypocrite and self a benefit of a doubt. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost has. Admonish a oh, friend. Oh, praise the name of the Most High. Amen. Admonish a friend. It may be. It may be. He has not done it. It may be he haven't done it. And if he have done it. If he did do it. That he do it no more. Admonish him so he don't do it no more. Admonish thy friend. Admonish your friend. It may be. It may be. He has not said it. He. <laughs> Amen. You better hear this. Hear this. Admon hear this. That's right. Hear this. Admonish thy friend. Admonish thy friend. It may be he has not said it. First, it may be he haven't done it. Haven't done it. Next, it may be he, he hasn't even said, said it. it. Oh, I heard that brother Mark said this. I heard that brother so-and-so said this. I heard that brother Devin said this. I heard that sister Naomi said this. I heard that mother Gretel said the other. That's I right. heard that Peter said this and Luke said the other. Yeah. It's dangerous to go around spreading what you heard. That's right. Because you can be a lie carrier. That's right. And if you're a lie carrier, you just as equal to the liar. Yeah. That's right. Speak what you know or shut your mouth. Amen. The Bible said, don't let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. To sin. Eh? Admonish thy friend. Admonish thy friend. Don't let no one go to you about a brother and a sister and fill your head up about them. And now you won't even speak to them. Y'all right. used to be friends. Y'all used to socialize. But as a result of someone putting something in your head. Right. You won't even speak to her. That's right. You won't even speak to him. Yeah. Amen. You don't even know them. That's true. Amen. That's true. If Brother Hugh is my friend, why would I get upset if he chooses to be friends with Brother Moretti? That's right. I said the right. That's right. Hugh, he don't belong to me. <laughs> Amen. Well, I like going to Hugh. Oh, you hanging out with Moretti now. <laughs> you hanging out with Moretti now. Come on. Come on, Hugh. You hanging out with Moretti now. Come on. <laughs> I'm a grown man. <laughs> right. All I'm right. doing acting like some hellbound child. Amen. Am I right? That's right. That's right. The holy book says. Admonish thy friend. My, my, man. This is detailed. Yeah. Call chapter and verse. I want, I want the public to read this. I want everybody, everybody, you need to read this. Now in the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19. The book 19. of Ecclesiasticus, or chapter, the book of Sarah, chapter 19. And now we're at verse 14. Admonish thy friend. Admonish. It, thy friend. Thy friend. It may be he has Hold not. It. Notice. Yeah. If it says admonish thy friend and it may be, it that may means be. when you admonish him, keep your mind open. That's right. Don't admonish him and you're narrow-minded. That's right. Be considerate. That's right. That when you talk to him or her That's about right. the matter, yeah. they can be innocent. That's true. Keep that under consideration. He or she can be innocent. Amen. And when you get grown people, and they forties and fifties, just as hellish <laughs> as young people. My Lord, you're a poor example to anybody. That's right. You know, I have thousands of young people in the truth of God. 
Yeah. And this is the message that suits all of them. Amen. There should never be cliques in church. That's right. Never. That's right. You want to know something about somebody? Think enough of them. Give them enough respect. Ask them. That's right. Ask him or ask her. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You need to hang. You know, a telephone gonna send a lot of folk to hell. Oh yeah. Internet gonna send folk to hell because you gossip too much. You talk too much about what you heard yeah. and not what you know. Do you hear the scripture talking? Admonish thy friend. Admonish thine friend. It may be. It may be. He has not said it. It may, it may be. He yeah. didn't say those things. That's right. About you. That's right. Keep your mind open. Yeah. Keep your, keep your mind up. It may be he or she didn't say it. And if he but, has, if he has. You know, the Bible deal with both of them. Both. It deal with the possibility of not doing it. Yeah. And it lets you know what to do if they actually done it. And if he has. If he have that, said something. That he speak it not again. Tell him don't say it no more. That's right. That's right. Amen. If he done it. Amen. And if he have. That he speak it not That he don't again. do it no more. If he say it, it, and it's true that he did say it. That's right. Tell him. Don't, don't, say that about, don't say that about me no more. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. My, 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 my. This is good. Amen. There's one church, one people. Yeah. No church clicks. That's right. That's right. Shouldn't be no sisters running around gossiping about brothers and sisters. Amen. Speak what you know and testify what you see and make sure what you see is what you're looking at. Right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If we're out of town somewhere and here, Huey is coming out of a hotel. Mm -hmm. And another such has come out of a hotel. That don't mean she was in a room with Huey. That's right. That's right. She, along with many others, could be standing in the same building because of the meeting in town. Right. That's right. If there's a bottle of beer on the floor <laughs> and Huey's sitting. Amen. It's not even worth mentioning there was a bottle of beer next to Huey. Just saying it yeah. can make it bigger than what it is. That's right. I, just saying it. That's because right. what I'm saying, I'm implying. Yeah. And I'm making someone that's weak-minded think. Yeah. And you know what they're going to do? If I say, there was a bottle of beer next to Huey where he was sitting. Right then I handed somebody a baton. That's right. They're going to take it. Pastor Jenna said he was drinking beer. <laughs> That's right. Then when they give it to someone else, they're going to take it. Man, did you hear about Huey? What happened? He got drunk off beer. Pastor Jenna's caught him. <laughs> My else going to take it. That's right. Did you have what happened to Huey? No. Man, he had a car accident. Dick. He was drunk. <laughs> and Pastor Jenna threw him out of the church. <laughs> My Lord. Now do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Stay away from people who always got stuff brewing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 When things like that happen, these are the instructions given from God. Let's go back. back First, in, dealing with what they do, yes. then we'll read about what they say. In Follow me. In Ecclesiastes chapter 19, we're starting at verse 13. All right. Admonish a friend. Admonish. Amen. You know, everybody that say you're a friend, they're yeah. not. No. Take it from Pastor Jennings. I know. <laughs> Been there. Oh, yeah. I, I, I find that saying true. With friends like these, who need enemies? <laughs> My understanding of friendship is different from most people. That's right. Hey Amen. I believe in being a friend and not wanting nothing from you. That's right. That's right. I don't feel as though that you owe me one thing. Amen. 
but to be honest. But for someone to use you and you a friend, they are rotten to the core. That's right. Amen. Listen. Admonish a friend. Admonish. A friend. A friend. It may be he has not done it. It may be he haven't done it. That means when you talk to him, yeah. regardless of all the negativity you heard about him or her, right. when you talk to them, mm -hmm. keep your mind open. That's right. So I said, what about if 15 people say it? Millions are saying they're three gods. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Millions. It isn't the amount of people that make it, what make it correct what's said. No. Millions are saying Jesus is the second person in the Godhead. Millions are saying the Holy Ghost is the third person. That never had been true and never will be true. So it doesn't make a thing true because there's many that get on the bandwagon with something. That's no. Right. That's right. And when you know it ain't true, don't let no one bring you down to their level. Amen. Let them scream, holler, spit, split, roll over, fall out, vomit. Get in a respirator, come out the hospital, go back in it again. <laughs> you know it ain't true? Yeah. Just hold your ground. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. I thought I'd be out of here by now, but you better come on, son. Let's work. Admonish a friend. Admonish a friend. It may be he has not done it. It may be Amen. that they're innocent. And if, and if he have done it, he done it, that he do it no more. Don't you do it no more. Ad, admonish thy friend. Admonish your friend. It may be he it has not be. said it. He didn't even say it. And if, if he have, he did say it. That he speak it not again. Tell him don't say that no more. Admonish a friend. Hey, hey, wait a minute, we got more? There's more. Admonish a friend. A friend. For many times. Many times. It is a slander. It's a slander. And believe not every tale. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brother, I'm, I'm telling you right now, God got all the information we can ever want. That's right. And this type of information, some don't want it. Amen. And this type of scripture, some is guilty. Yeah. And I had no things on working on this, but the Holy Ghost got me here. And being that he got me here, brother, I'm going to be right here. Amen. As many now that are guilty. Yeah. Admonish. Admonish a friend. Friend. For many times it is a slander. Many times it's a slander. And believe not every tale. Don't believe everything you heard. That's right. Uh -huh. There is one that slippeth in his speech. There's one that slip in his speech. And their talk. But not from his heart. But not from what? Not from his heart. Not from his heart. Sometimes a person says something they didn't mean to say. That's right. But from the heart they really love you. That's right. Sometimes. Sometimes. Remember that. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes. That's right. Amen. Amen. All right. There is one that slippeth in his speech, uh -huh. but not from his heart. Right. And who is he that hath not offended with his tongue? Well, in other words, who is he that never slipped with his mouth? Right. Every member of the human family, something came out their mouth that shouldn't came out. That's right. Whatever you hear about a brother or sister, don't you judge them and don't go acting indifferent. They got a consideration. They could be innocent. That's right. That's well, they right. were speaking in tongue when they told me about it. Well, how was you able to understand it and speak in tongue? <laughs> Amen. You're speaking in tongue, the Bible said, I'll be it in the spirit. You speak a mystery. Speaking mysteries. Huh? <laughs> That's right. You're speaking mystery. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so beautiful. Out, beautifully outlined. Admonish thy neighbor. Admonish thy neighbor. Before thou threaten him. I know folk want me to quit now. <laughs> Bill, did you hear that? Admonish thy neighbor. Admonish thy neighbor. Before thou threaten him. Amen. Amen. I remember I had a neighbor, a bigot. Mm. Yeah, man, that, 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 that fellow was just like the devil. And I remember when we, we decided to lay a cement driveway, got rid of the asphalt, and there was a dumpster on our property. So therefore, he brought his trash out of his house right next door to me and thrown it in my dumpster. Mm. 
And my wife said, uh, this is our dumpster. We got to pay for it. You take your trash and set it on your side. <laughs> you know, my wife is from the hood. She don't play that. <laughs> and uh, he got upset with her. So <laughs> from that day, he became an agitator. Mm. After we laid all the concrete, he called the city and everything and said we on his property line and all this stuff. City inspector came out. They, they said, no, 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 Mr. Jennings, he, he's right, he's right on the line. He wouldn't hear the city inspector. So he went and got a hammer and a big chisel, set on the stool on the edge of the driveway and just start chiseling. My Lord. That's constant. I remember my wife and son went home from church one day, one summer, and called me. And my son had the FaceTime me on his phone. Boy, my wife was so upset, she said, this devil, stand right, why the man right there? She said, Gino, this devil is standing, sitting right here, trying to chisel. I said, Daddy, just call the police. I said, call the police on Satan. The police came out. The man, and the police asked the man, uh, why, why are you damaging this man's driveway? He just listened at the cop and kept going. Mm. I told my wife, I said, don't worry about him. God will take care of him. He, he won't be around much longer. <laughs> He's gone too. Mm. Amen. Ambulance came to the house months later. Gone, ain't been back. Lord. God have a way of taking care of you, don't he? That's right. All right, read some more of that quickly so I can knock off. Admonish thy neighbor before thou threaten him. Yeah, you and know there's some neighbors you feel like threatening them, don't you? <laughs> Amen. There's some neighbors you don't feel like blessing them. No. You feel like picking up bricks and bottles and hammers. And anoint them with, with iron. With iron. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost giving us instructions here. Admonish thy neighbor. That's why I tell you that are watching, don't argue with no one who speak evil of First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, who speak evil of the truth of God message, who speak evil of Pastor Jennings. Don't go back and forth with nobody That's on right. internet. Nobody, because all they want is that kind of attention. Don't That's give right. it to them. That's right. People write me. Did you hear about this preacher saying that about you? No, I'm not interested. I'm, interested. I'm no more interested in it and trying to notice a flea on the back of a dog. Amen. Not interested. Why? We're busy saving souls. That's right. Listen at this. Admonish thy neighbor. Admonish. Thy neighbor. Thy neighbor. Before thou threaten him. Before you threaten him. And not being angry. Now, what, 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 what? And not being angry. The Holy Ghost said that. That's right. The Holy Ghost said that. And not being angry. And when you admonish him, don't be angry at him. Give place to the law of the Most High. Let the law take care of it. That's right. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the first step. The fear of the Lord is the first step. To be accepted of him. Amen. Remember that. Get okay. chapter and verse. Now in Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 18. One scripture says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. understanding. Another scripture says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's right. Now the word of God says what? The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is. Is the first step. The first step. To be accepted of him. I'd rather have God accept me than anybody. That's right. And the reason why a lot of people don't go but so far, you too busy fighting for acceptance by others. Amen. Why should others accept you when you won't even accept yourself? That's right. That's right. What is it? The fear of the Lord. I ain't trying to be accepted by nobody. Amen. Don't care. If you love me, fine. Hate me, fine. As yeah. long as I have the love of God, that works. that works. I don't want the hate of God. That's right. People hate me. I don't lose sleep. Yeah. People write me, cuss me out. I laugh at the letters. I smile at them. In fact, I'm grateful that you had enough energy 
that the word burnt your britches up so bad That's right. you had the energy to write me That's right. and lay down your frustration. Amen. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to help nothing now. You still got to obey Acts 38. That's right. What is that? The fear of the Lord uh -huh. is the first step to be accepted of him. And? And wisdom obtaineth his love. Wisdom? And wisdom obtaineth his love. Obtains his love. His love. That's, that's, that's good right there. That's good. Fear of the Lord is, a good, is the first step. First step to be accepted of him. For him to accept you. And wisdom and obtaineth if, his if love. If you're wise, obtaineth his love. You are get his love. Uh, hallelujah! Hallelujah. Bios, repent of your sins. That's it. You want God love? It is wise that you hear this message. That's right. And repent. Repent and be baptized. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody here tonight hallelujah. want to go down in water and get your sins washed away? And be baptized. Stand on your feet if anybody here wanted tonight. If not, remember Amen. what the word of God says. Right. What did he say? The fear of the Lord. The Read fear it of the Lord is the first step. The first step. To be accepted of be him. Accepted of him. And wisdom obtaineth wisdom his love. Obtain his love. Here's love. His you love. Give chapter and verse for all that. Now that was in the book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 19. You get a chance, you read the 19th chapter, the whole chapter. The whole chapter. Well or the, the book chapter. of Ecclesiasticus or the book of Sarich. Chapter 19. Chapter 19, read all, love it. Verses 1 through 30. And judge yourself according. May God keep you, may God preserve you is our prayer. <laughs> Let us all stand. Hallelujah. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory and power both now and forever. Let all of our brothers and sisters say, Amen.